Welcome back. We got another early screening review of a movie that's going to be coming out here next week. Um, a Fandango early preview, which I was happy to attend here in Boise. Pretty packed crowd, I have to say, for something that... A movie that I've seen very little trailers of myself, besides when I go to the theater. Um, not what I would have expected to fill one of the biggest theaters that we have here in Boise. Pretty much to the capacity um, for a week early. I mean... You know, I'm not expecting this movie to do big at the box office next week. So I, I, won't, I won't lie, when I went to go get my ticket after work today, I wasn't expecting to see as many like you know little spots that were open. Um, everything in the middle, all the way from the very beginning to the top, was basically filled, minus a couple set you know simple little onesies, one spot here, one spot there, which is perfect for somebody like me who goes to fill in. But this was a packed house, and I have to say, the Lost City is another solid hit for Paramount Pictures this year. They started off pretty strong with some Scream 5 action, and this Sandra Bullock Channing Tatum comedy was quite enjoyable throughout. Um, going over the present, you know, the, the, the plot a bit, Sandra Bullock plays the character Loretta Sage, a best-selling romance novelist, um, with Channing Tatum playing... Alan Caprison, or Alan, just call him Alan, that's what they call him in the movie, who is the cover model um, for her main character, Dash uh, McMahon, um, for those novels. And they get kind of stuck on this little adventure comedy duo type action, almost very buddy cop like, but in a different setting. Um, also, in the movie, you have Daniel Radcliffe, our very, one of our favorite, you know, actors in the past decade with the Harry Potter franchise and more. He comes in as Abigail Fairfax, a rich, snobby, you know, rich, British rich person who's looking for an ancient crown in this with this ancient sort of civilization. And he kidnaps um, Sandra Bullock's um, Loretta pretty early on in the movie. And we get going kind of on the plot from there, for, for, you know, for the most part, you know, Channing Tatum as Alan, he's somebody who likes, you know, Loretta, wants to, you know, feel be more than what he, she sees him as, which we kind of see at the beginning is just a stupid doof who just gets by by his looks. A lot of the jokes they have throughout got a lot of laughs from both myself and the people in the audience. Um, and they were just, just stupid enough that they were felt like fresh and new and it was funny. But Tatum just gave very good lines on them. He didn't overdo them. A lot of them came back in different ways, so they kind of made what was a joke for one person in the beginning kind of come back in another way you know, later on. Um, and I thought it was just very well written all around. Um, another big actor that makes a very brief but powerful, funny appearance is Brad Pitt. Um, you know, with his character that he plays, I think it's really funny and kind of how it goes there. Um, with, with what happens with him and what not, I think is great. You know, the the line "Go to sleep" is, is which is funny throughout. And when it, when it, when Brad Pitt said it, it kind of had its own funny tone to it with his acting. And later on, when Channing Tatum was trying to recreate that same type of line, it played in a whole different way, and it was super funny and was really getting a lot of laughs out of this. And this was this movie, despite feeling like it might be an, an action adventure treasure hunting type movie. In essence, it's just a comedy. It's a buddy cop comedy that's being put in this different format, which I kind of like, you know, um, where um, a lot of different things happen throughout that really, I think, turn some genres that you're used to on the head in a very positive way. Um, Divine Joy Randolph played the agent for Loretta Sage Bullock's, you know, writing character. And just her throughout gave a very much vibe of, isn't as strong of a, of a performance and as well written as character as say um, the agent from Tropic Thunder, but she goes through a very similar role in that way. And I find her very funny. And when they cut back to her, they didn't spend too much time cutting back, but every time it just was kind of like a palate cleansing laugh, so to say. And I didn't feel like that time was wasted. And I think divine joy Randolph really held her own in that role. And a lot of it was just her own play on, you know, in her own, um, way to give off comedy, but make you kind of relate to her character and understand her and what she's potentially going through, and more that she isn't just a typical snobby agent. Um, 
you know, Radcliffe, if anything, it might be the weakest part, but that's because I think his part is just written the worst. We all get the, you know, the super eccentric billionaires who have money that want something. Um, and I think he does a very good job being funny in the role, and it's different from what we see with him, Radcliffe. And I'm happy to see him in here. But there was a very shallow role. There wasn't very much going on, per se. If anything was more funny, I would say some of his goons were kind of funny. Um, there was one with a mustache throughout that I thought was very, very good. And, you know, where his character kind of went in the end, they did a very good job just, you know, using their goons as memorable enough that you can um, pick them out. You know, they're not just face like goons of, of the rich person. Um, but every time something happened to them, it was it turned into a very good joke that felt real, felt realistic, and had a proper take on it. Um, but overall, this was just an enjoyable movie. Um, was it? Was it? Is it going to be the deepest movie in the world? No. Does it have the best plot in the world? Is it something that you're gonna you can't nitpick apart and stuff like that? Definitely, just that's the case. It isn't the strong pop plot you can definitely nitpick and say what about this what about this but in the end this is just a comedy um featuring four or five actors with two of them basically being the lead front with channing tatum and sandra bullock and they pull it off very very well um they are very believable all throughout except for the ending i personally didn't like the ending i would have you know liked something different happen i don't want to spoil it per se but i feel other people get it might feel the same way with that um, but their chemistry as friends and stuff going throughout was very, very good. Um, I thought, you know, Channing Tatum at one point says, like, am I the damsel in distress? Um, because Sandra Bullock is the one that is actually the value that is being used by Radcliffe. And Tatum is the, the, per the you know, a person that may or may not be held over of Sandra's character. Um, was a really good twist on it. You, you know, each character kind of had their own little journey that you can get it off of. And like I said, the comedy was fresh throughout. They did little things here and there that really, you know, I thought were fresh and new per se. I think there was one when it came to a river that they had with, with Loretta Sage, Sandra's character, thought of something that made perfect sense. And it's like, why hasn't this been thought of in a movie like this before? I kind of like it in the way she phrased it. Um, and coming from a novelist, somebody who... Is who writes these eccentric, you know, romance, you know, novels that are, or a set, you know, that are like about finding treasure and stuff like that. Um, I thought was really, really, really good in a character, you know, that she'd be a character that would think of things like that. Um, and I also think the MacGuffin, the treasure in this movie, I think was handled near perfectly, and I loved the way it was done. And I can't wait to see what other people feel when they get through that. I think the fact that it, that, the, that the crown that they were chasing after, when you see you know exactly what that is and what it means and everything like that, it really does a great job in this movie. Um, and it's one that if I'm going to give recommendations to, I think it's a, it's one of all ages. There isn't really there is a little bit of, of nudity with if you consider butt nudity with Channing Tatum, and there's maybe some sexual jokes here and there. Um, but it's a pretty family friendly film beyond that. Definitely, I would, you know, I would range it anywhere between teenagers all the way up to older individuals. I'll be honest, the people who came out of this movie laughing and loving it the most around me were people who were going to be older, you know, with, with older couples, you know, people in their 40s and 50s and 60s just had a blast at this movie. And I personally did too. I thought it was really fun. I think coming off the Batman and some of the more serious movies we've had this year. It was kind of cool to get kind of like a it's not original like it's original in the sense that it's not tied to a property but the this type of genre isn't the most original in the world but it was fresh it felt something like i haven't seen or tasted in a while it was very um just overall positive experience and i think the fact that it wasn't a two-hour movie it was a very short you know style movie it's new it's length it was just very enjoyable I would recommend this thing to pretty much anybody who's just looking for a fun comedy, um, something to go out and see and just enjoy in a movie theater. Um, definitely something, you know, what I'd recommend. I think Bullock and Tatum hit it out of the park, and I'm excited to see how it does at the box office. This is one that I could see starting off maybe a little bit slower with the box office opening, but being like a Jumanji or, or um, you know, a movie in that ca caliber, that'll just keep the box office for four to five, six, seven weeks and keep strong and, and get, build a very good 
box office behind it, and I hope it does. I think the word of mouth is going to be very strong on this movie. Like I said, I'm giving it a very positive review. Recommend it for anybody looking for a comedy. Go out and go enjoy this movie next week when it comes out. I don't think you'll regret it. I definitely think it's a great date movie, um, and it's going to be a great time overall. Now, when talking about it as a whole, though, we're going to go over here and see where I would rank it in my top 22, 2022 movies of the year. And as you see here, it is still behind Bell and the Batman, which I think are just better overall made films. But I put it as a pretty solid number three. Um, I was going back and forth, and I just think this movie I enjoyed more than Scream. I had a lot more laughs with it. I thought it was a lot you know, cleaner written in a lot of different ways. I think Scream was very enjoyable, and it's still a very strong number four movie for me. Um, but this movie, I just felt, was just so fresh, so quick, so witty. Nothing felt overdone or overused. I thought it was a very good time. I put it at my third-ranked movie of the year. Definitely way above anything that's going to be on the, the right-hand side. Death of Denial, Uncharted, Moonfall, way beyond that. Um, and I really can't wait to see what people think about this movie. If you have any questions, please leave some below. I'm going to be putting a lot of different reviews out. Um, next week is Oscar season. I've yet to see four movies in Belfast, Coda, King Richard, and Drive My Car. And luckily for me, my theater is showing them all in the next week. And with my weekend here, I want to fit two movies a day in where I'm going to go see uh, either Belfast or Coda tomorrow with King Richard. And then drive my car with the other one, either Belfast or Coda, whatever one is, is playing which day. Um, and put those reviews out. Most likely, or maybe do one big review of them. Um, and then on Wednesday, I'm going to film up my Oscar predictions going into the Oscars. I have my thoughts. I, I, I'm going to do a nice big video with a good slideshow, breaking down each category, who I think I would pick for winning, and then who I think will win. And we'll see how we do there. I'm interested to see how I do. I can't wait to do that. But, hey, that's beyond the point right now. Go enjoy Lost City when it comes out next week. And Lost City was amazing. Bullock and Tatum were a great duo. It was just a fun comedy per se. And I can't recommend it enough. And until next time, I hope everybody enjoys themselves, has a great week, and get themselves ready for both this movie and what's going to be a great Oscar ceremony coming up soon. Thank you, and have a good day.